Hello campers. Well, I'm a little bit late today and as you can see, I'm nowhere close to the studio. My internal clock isn't what it used to be and I'd actually forgotten that I was supposed to be at a racetrack this weekend. So here I am uh, outside the racetrack at Roebling Road and we're pulling up. We've pulled up and we're just waiting for them to open the gates because somebody's still out there having uh, their fun, but our fun starts tomorrow. But now that I'm off of Highway, um, what was it, 16, I was like, well, we'll go ahead and do it. We'll be a little bit late, but I'll still make the effort to talk to y'all. Yeah. Got that powerhouse behind me right now. And no, that is not the machine I'm going to be riding at the track. That is just my track toy to get around on the track because I'm told to walk anymore. Well, I'm pretty sure my crew sent me a, uh, hey, Panagiotis. Uh, I'm very well today. Very well. I'm pretty sure Hank loaded me in some questions that I may have missed last week. So we, uh, we're going to start this session, which I'll probably only do about 15 minutes. Because I do want to go ahead and get signed in so I can get a... Love that. Hopefully I'll hear that. Love the sound of a racing engine, you know? So I can get a preferred uh, camping spot because I'm going to stay at the track. Oh shoot! Those were for those were for ten twenty nine. I brought up the wrong ones. Y'all give me a minute. Let's go back and see if Hank got them. Let's try that. All right, that's more like it. Folo had asked me. Um, Two wheeling pobo. Hey John, my Grom having Medicare light stays on even when the switch is set to low. Yeah, I think we talked about that last week, so we, we can go past that one. Um, Alexander had asked me, Hi John, my YFC 450R won't turn on. It smokes from the intake when I try to crank it. Ooh, any ideas? That almost sounds like it jumped timing to me. Um, Alexander, I think I'd start with that first. Uh, bring your uh, take off your inspection caps, the crankshaft, bring it around a top dead center, maybe pull your, your valve uh, um, valve cover, and uh, let's make sure she didn't jump tongues. That's what it sounds like to me. If it's spitting back through and she doesn't want to start, she may have jumped a tooth. Z's B696 um, had asked, great video in general. How often should the drive belt be replaced on my Yamaha Grizzly 700? All right, well, that's a little bit of a loaded question. It, honestly, it depends on how you've got your machine set up and how hard you're actually running it because um, that's going to determine how quickly it's going to wear. I mean, you throw some 130-pound man or woman on it and they're just cruising around the woods, not working it at all, <laughs> it'll probably dry rot before it uh, actually wears out. You put somebody my size on there pulling a trailer and pulling a trailer with it, yeah, it's gonna wear out wear it out a whole lot quicker. Um, my rule of thumb is at least you need to check it at least annually when you wake your machine up after uh, if it took a nap during the, the winter months and just visually inspect it, see if there's any cracks in it, see if there's any teeth missing on the inside of the belt. Now those those teeth aren't you know it's not like they're engaging anything because the belt actually is getting squeezed on the sheaves on the sides, but those teeth in the middle are going to give you a good indicator if there's a problem there or not, um, or if, the, you know, the belt's getting old and getting brittle, and uh, that means it's going to cut loose with you. And the best time to, to look at that is at the beginning of the season, because that's when it's been sitting the longest, and potentially uh, that could save you from having your first ride out being towed back instead of ridden back. Looks like... Uh... We've got a couple of questions starting to pile up. I'll jump over to the uh, the live chat, see what you're up to, and then if I catch up with you, great, and and um, I can maybe come back to some more of these what we call backup questions that I, I missed from um, last week. All right, writer, writer, Hu Tang. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but okay, he got me to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Midlake, listen to that. I hope y'all can hear that. That's a dedicated guy because it's actually raining right now, and I've driven on this track so many times in the rain. It's a lot of fun, but you better respect it. 
Oh, mid lake, mid lake goat. Hey, I live in Canada and it's like minus 10 right now. Average. Oh my Lord. I wouldn't know what to do with that. It's a little late in the year, but do you think I can still change all the fluids in my Polaris sportsman? Yes. It's going to be real tough on the differentials. I know uh, it's going to be real tough on the differentials. You should be able to just start your machine. You're really going to need to, to winterize it properly and you know, bring it up to temp, go ahead and run, Go ahead and put some fuel stabilizer in the tank, let it run through. But as far as heating your differentials, I wouldn't want to go out there when it's minus 10. So I'd say either get a heat gun or worst case, your wife slash girlfriend's hair dryer and just warm it up, warm them up. And it's going to take a while, but, you know, get them up to at least 80, 90 degrees. And that, that would make it a lot easier for them to drain out. Otherwise, <laughs> that's going to be like trying to, to drain out uh, May Hall syrup. Or, uh, that's jelly. K rose syrup. Let's go with that. All right. Northeast, uh, he uh, retracted his message. Calumet7, thanks for the great content. You have helped me confidently complete repairs. I happen to have both machines that are in most of your vids. Cool. Which two do you have? Um, good luck at the track this weekend. I'm going to have a blast. Uh, my son and I are actually both uh, instructors for this group that we're driving with called Just Track It. And uh, I'm going to be in a fun car. I mean, my car's fun. It's just a little 95 or 99 BMW M3 with you know, 243 horsepower at the rear wheel. But my student is in a um, 2015 Corvette. That's going to be fun. <laughs> so I can't wait to get out there with them, with him rather. Uh, Northeast has come back with this question now. Do you think a differential brace is a good idea on a 2021 Grizzly 700? I wasn't aware that um, the, the differentials were having a hard time. Um, I mean, I've seen them in high, high torque situations where if, if they get a little bit loose in the brackets, they'll actually wallow out the, the brackets. But I didn't realize that that was an issue on 2021. But hey, if you've got uh, oversized wheels on yours or really working your machine hard, a little bit of bracing, I mean, why not? Um, I don't think it's a bad idea. But um, if, if the 2021 Grizzly 700 has an issue with it, I haven't read about it yet, but I can't read everything. But uh, my original answer still uh, stands true. Go ahead and brace it up if you're working it hard. <clears throat> and like, uh, oh, Chris Beasley, John Talley for president. No way, man. <laughs> you couldn't give me that job, but I appreciate the vote of confidence. I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. I don't want to No, I'm just not going to go there. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Let's go. No. <laughs> All right, Cold War came back. Hi, John. I have a problem with the Honda TRX 350 89. Something knocks when turning right. I replaced the articulation and then the same. Usually, when you hear clicking on that, that tells you it's probably a four wheel drive. That's one of the indica indicators that you're having a CV joint problem uh, that's probably going bad in, on, in the front somewhere. It should be fairly easy to track to go down. Go ahead and jack up the whole machine, get it up in the engage it turn it all the way and it it, it should click that that it that might mask it with the uh the articulation angle changing by unloading the axles but that's usually how how i would find them uh calumet came back and said a 400x and the 700 grizzly cool on oh, and by the way i've mentioned it a couple of times we're going to be doing a 400x next year um we're going to go the full Monty on it. So uh, stay tuned for it. I can't wait to show you all the, what I bought. You're going to be, you actually paid for that. But uh, when I'm done with it, it's going to be a badass. But it's going to take a lot to bring it back. I mean, it's, it's bad. <laughs> Nomad Chad, what is up with the thrust washer and the Yamaha diffs? I've taken three apart and all three failed, have failed thrust washer bearings. What, um, what is the stop bolt on the diff for that seems to contact the bevel gear? 
Now, now, Matt, I haven't run into that yet. Um, which Yamaha t diffs are we talking about? Give me a little bit more information, and uh, I can, when I get back to the office, I'll check into the uh, the Yamaha dealer website and see if they've got any any notes on that. Because you know, typically, you know, your dealer is going to know that one, and I can find out the same information because I've got dealer access. So, give me your year, make, and model, and let me see if I can track that down for you for uh, next week. Kevin has asked me, what is a good way to test the clutch functioning in a sport quad without it actually moving? I'm trying to make sure everything is functioning properly before my first ride after a full motor rebuild. <sighs> yeah, you can you can lift the whole thing up in the air and uh, and run it, but you've got zero drag on the clutch, and that's not really going to tell you anything. Uh, if, it's, if there was something wrong, it's not going to come up until you actually put some type of stress on the clutch system itself. Without it moving, well, we don't have one anymore, but have a, uh, a, a dyno to strap it to. If there's anybody or any dealership in your, uh, that's nearby that has one, take it over there and strap its butt to that. Uh, even a car dyno, it should, the rear axle, depending on which make and model you have, it should actually reach out far enough, far, far enough to where it can get on the barrels. But short of that, you just got to ride it. Um, why wouldn't you want to go ahead and take it out? Or are you up in Canada where it's minus 10? I'd understand that if that's the case. Um, South Carolina is asking me, hello, John, getting ready to install my Rossia engineering full exhaust to my big three upgrade. Do you know a map on the Dynojet PC5 that will get me close on a 2021 YFC 450 RSE? I know on the Dynojet website, they've got folder after folder after folder of their recommended files and i would say to look there first do i know of one just off the top of my head for your particular application no but that the first place i would go look would be the dynojet website first and if they if they don't have anything then go to their technical ask me and then say hey this is what i've got what would you recommend because those are the guys it's their equipment it's their program so they, they should be able to guide you to at least get you in the ballpark where you're not going to damage the engine if you're going to have somebody come back and tune it. And it sounds like the level that you're operating at, you would need to do so. Uh, a canned um, map is going to get you started, no pun intended, but it's probably not going to get the best out of the machine. Worst case, it's not going to run like it should. Well, best case, it's not going to run like it should. Worst case, it may be a little too lean and it'll eat itself and you don't want that. I've unfortunately experienced that before. I don't want to meet that tuner face to face again. That um, I won't go into it. But, uh, it was expensive. All right. All right, BH. What have you been hearing about supply chain issues for Yamaha? Oof. Yamaha parts are taking two plus months. It, it's bad. It's bad, and that's just all there is to it. And it's bad on every single level. It's bad as far as, you know, us being a, a, a part supplier. And it's also bad for us being a, 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 you know, operating dealerships as well. Because there's so many machines that are 95% finished out, you know, at, at Yamaha. And then they can't, well, they're going to have to start you know, sending them out unfinished. They be, may be missing a chip or a gear or whatever. And believe me, they're trying as hard as they can to find alternate uh, parts or pieces or, of these components so they can finish the machines and get them out. When is all this supply chain madness going to end? Oh, God, I wish I knew. But um, I think it's going to be with us for a little while longer. No mad, Chad. Um, okay, yeah, he came back and told me. The Kodiak 400 and Rhino 660 2005 rear diffs have a thrust washer with eight little ball bearings the size of donut sprinkles and they take the side load of the bevel gear what what is um do you have yours modified at all chad as far as uh, where it's having to work harder than a normal uh differential and i'd also be curious to know what kind of fluid and your fluid change frequency if you are running it that much harder you may need to uh, change up your the concoction in there uh, to maybe something Maybe not Yamaha related, but or, or, or prove something that could put up with that uh, that additional stress that I think your machine may be going through. 
Chris has asked me any downside to adding a fuel programmer to a 21 Grizzly 700. I added one and it's running cooler like I wanted. Spark plug looks fine, not running rich. I think it's dialed in with the tuner. Oh, I have no problem doing that. Um, I don't care if you're talking about motorcycles, ATVs, or cars. The manufacturers, they program an ECU to do everything okay, but nothing great. Because they don't know, where, A, where your machine is going to be, where how you're going to use it. Now, once you determine, okay, I live in southwest Georgia, and my temperature range is going to be here, and I'm not going to pull trailers with it. Oh, that opens up taking your, your power curve and then shaping it like you want and then eventually getting more power or cooler running engine or whatever you're particularly looking for. So um, just adding a programmer to it, absolutely. And there's there's no doubt about that. I mean, look at the performance levels you can get out of a stock car by having somebody go in and tune it. I mean, it is a tuner's world that we live in and there's no doubt about that. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Chris, uh, yeah, he's in, Al he's in Alaska. Good grief. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go ride it either. <laughs> Not for several more months. Mm. Uh, Sinister RC. Have you had any problems with Honda new carbs on my 400EX? Mine still leaks out the tube. Well, it's going to be one of two things. Either A, your float level, float bowl level is too high and it's running out, or it's leaking at that seat at the float level. It's going to be one of those two things. Make sure your level's right and also make sure you're, you've got the correct in a new um, jet, if you want to call it. It's not a jet. It's a, uh, it's a stopper plunger is what it actually is that attaches to the, um, the float, the floats inside of the float bowl. All right, guys. Did I catch up with you? I think I did. And I think the track just went cold because I haven't heard anybody to come by anymore. And that means I can go check in. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to call it quits early. Well, guys, I appreciate you swinging in, even though I was a little bit late, spending some time with me on this rainy day and uh, sending me a couple of good questions. Give me something to do while I was waiting for the... Uh, the track gate to go up and i think they're walking out there now but once again say thank you for uh, swinging by thank you for shopping with us here at partzilla and hopefully god willing i will be back at uh the studio next week so everybody have a great weekend a great week and we will see you then